Put in your headphones. It's about to get busy. In the dark ages before smartphones controlled every aspect of our lives, I used to use this little gadget, an Olympus dictaphone, to record every single lesson or gig or masterclass I went to when I was a student at ACM Guildford. Now, one of the most interesting and insightful clinics uh, I ever went to was way back in March 2007 when Yannick Gwizdala stopped by the college to drop some knowledge on students and staff alike. Now, obviously, a decade ago, Yannick was not nearly as well known as he is today. Um, to give you some context, around the time of this masterclass, he'd just come off tour with a pop singer called Jem, um, and he had released Mystery to Me, uh, I think, which is his first release as a leader the year before. So he was not the sort of well-established solo bass player, uh, band leader and YouTube vlog sensation that he is today. Um, and if you followed Yannick playing closely over the course of his career, I think you'll find it quite interesting to hear the difference between his perspective on things back then and his take on things today. Now, the audio quality on this thing is pretty terrible uh, and I've done my best to clean it up and EQ it so you can really hear what he's saying and what he's playing. I've also transcribed everything that Yannick says and some of what he played so you can really get a feel for the musical concepts that he talks about. I've also edited some of the topics together for the sake of continuity. Um, as happens with many masterclasses, it's just random questions from students. Um, some of those questions are more valuable than others and often the same topics get brought up time and time again but at 10 minute intervals. So what I've done is I've just tried to group things together in the most succinct and logical way possible. The clinic is divided into three parts. Part one deals with transcription uh, and if you've ever seen any of Yannick's stuff before you know that he's incredibly passionate about the value of transcription and he talks about uh, what he got from studying uh, the recordings of various players like Pat Metheny, George Benson, Alan Holdsworth, um, Michael Bracken, and a bunch of other people. Uh, it's really valuable insights into how he got his playing together. Uh, the second part focuses mainly on his early days playing the bass, how he got into playing the instrument, and his mentorship with Lawrence Cottle, which I haven't really heard him talk at length about at any other point in time. And then part three deals with his philosophy regarding practice and some other general musicianship areas. Is, uh, is transcription and how super important that is, and especially when you go and transcribe a piano solo, for instance, the right hand is burning, you know, it's maybe Chick Corea or Herbie Hancock or someone, Phineas Newborn, but the left hand is also super important, and how all of those melodies work within the context of the harmony that the piano plays playing, or the comping instrument for a solo. So, yeah, um, if I'm listening to Michael Breaker solo and transcribing it, I'm also super conscious of what Joey Carrazzo might be doing behind it, you know, where he's. You know, Leading and what kind of clusters he's playing because you get some stuff that you don't really expect to hear on a, on a, on a bass. Herbie Hancock does this whole half step, half step, which is all of just a fine part. It's just just A7 going to D, but it's. Why only piano play 
should be able to move a single note within a chord and sustain some stuff on top. To create tension within a solo, you know, the solo might be... Classical music, which is a really good source of it's stuff that you don't normally get 
to play you know, I mean, it's electric bass players and, and commercial musicians you don't often get to play in a symphony orchestra, if ever. So that can be another great source of inspiration.